You are welcome to HN What's Your Say? The number one listening show, where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring our Kelly. Real name, Robert Sylvester Kelly, also known as the R&B King. Ever since the R. Kelly case started off a few years back, there has been a lot of public opinion suggesting he could be fighting a racial war, more than he is for his own justice. These comments were based on the fact that a number of successful African-American artists were being targeted in matters such as these, especially as they approach their retirement age, a time when they are assumed no longer as economically viable, as their tax returns begin to dwindle. But this was all considered by many just another rumor, probably because the racial concerns were coming from the ordinary American, and our Kelly fans from other parts of the world. As the masters of law, and other people assumed to be of greater social relevance are now coming out to make similar claims of racial injustice, such as Jennifer Bonjean, his new attorney who prematurely retired Steve Greenberg and team, a little more attention is beginning to get drawn to the possibility that indeed, this could be a racial war he is dealing with or Kelly. Jennifer Bonjean, on her Twitter handle recently posted asking, where are the RICO prosecutions for powerful white men? Invoking the Matt Luer case, a former American television personality who faced charges of rape and abuse back in 2019, but was never subjected to the RICO Act charges as Kelly is. The reality that the R. Kelly case has likely taken a racial turn is no longer just a rumor in the social media corridors, but a possible reality. One wonders why the prosecution is trying as much as possible to apply the RICO Act in relation to R. Kelly's case, as though he was a gangster or illegal substance dealer with a network of partners and mules. This is very wrong, especially if it has not been applied with similar cases in the past that involved powerful white personalities. An act cannot be uniquely used to implicate only one person. That is unfair. Another case Bonjean invoked while she made her response to the government's opposition statement was that of the former Fox News boss and she said, if the government's description of an enterprise should hold, then all the Fox News staff that aided their boss's alleged actions are indeed part of his criminal enterprise, and should have been brought to book as well. RICO charges would have also applied to this particular case but this did not happen. Another request recently made by Bonjean was that the sentencing date be moved from May 4 to sometime in September, right after the Chicago trial scheduled for August. This would allow her client R. Kelly to make his pre-sentencing mitigations without worry, that anything he said as his final words in one case could be used against him when in Illinois. This was also duly denied, even though the court decided to make a one-month extension, which according to Judge Ann Donnelly was to allow enough time for the pre-sentencing report to come through. The judge also added that the sentencing date cannot be shifted to August or September, because the affected persons have been waiting for many years to find justice. This rejection of Bonjean's request, and subsequent explanation by the court caused Bonjean more reason to tweet saying, I am saddened but not surprised that the government is more interested in meeting out mob justice, than ensuring a free and fair hearing for R. Kelly and everyone else involved. This became quite an interesting statement, because it reflected the feeling of many including myself. It had been bothering me for a while why this seems to be the case and here comes Bonjean saying just that. It only hurts to see them do this to R. Kelly, but as our government has always had issues, it's nothing to be surprised about. All these forms of injustice that have been seen before, applied to cases involving black and not white America indeed justify calling this a racial war, targeting to take down successful African American artists, as they approach the age of reduced productivity, and are now regarded of less economic importance. This in addition to the distinct inconsistencies and sudden changes of statements by prosecution, are enough reason for one to determine that an element of race may be embedded deep into the R. Kelly case. One may argue that we are able to identify these loopholes and discuss them only because we are in R. Kelly's camp. This is wrong, because even if I wasn't for the R&B king, I still would have defended the right for anyone else to avoid self-incrimination, along with the Fifth and Sixth Amendment rights as stated in previous episodes. It feels rather nice to know that even the legal elites such as Bonjean are able to detect the racial component of this case and condemn it. 
Also knowing that he has promised to break this down and defeat it is rather exciting. Bonjean has quite a good experience in failing cases like this one, and I can't agree more that she will do a good job turning the tables around. No wonder she goes ahead and tweets saying, it's getting heated up, and it's not me. A true reflection of how the R. Kelly case is progressing at this time. What R. Kelly has been lacking is a lawyer with a difference, who is able to engage government in a form of exchange of motions. Bon Jean is exactly this person, and definitely the new hope for R. Kelly to regain his lost freedom. According to Angelia Gates Williams, I am praying R. Kelly is set free and the truth comes out. It's currently difficult to learn the truth in this matter because Robert is still in prison. Some things are probably left out in order not to hurt the case. When he is free however, everyone will be free to say what they feel like in his defense, and this will likely surprise many how much information was never revealed. Among this will be some real eye-opening information that I am certain will hurt many. According to Michelle Thompson, there has been so many discrepancies and holes in this case that cause you wonder, how is this still happening? Lies after lies have been told on R. Kelly. His basic legal rights have also been violated and we have legal proof to this. It saddens me to see this happen to our judicial system. These are the very same discrepancies that clouded Bill Cosby's case, that are now here too, tormenting the R&B king. We cannot say we have justice when we still convict people differently along racial lines. If RICO should apply in this case, it should also call for a reversal of all other previous judgments of similar cases, where this particular act was never invoked. Does the government suddenly twist the laws to suit their immediate and specific agenda? Perhaps you should tell me. According to Margot Evelyn, I wish Bonjean has been on R. Kelly's case right from the beginning of this entire mess. She seems brilliant enough to achieve us something tangible for a result. Well I know she is an appellate lawyer that waits for cases to turn bogey before she steps in, but would have loved to know what the outcome would be if she had started with the case right from the beginning. According to Michelle Thompson, Robert Kelly wasn't even granted a bond, like where do they do this? Even those who take lives and rape most times get a bond. However, R. Kelly is being handled like he is less a human. The government is really trying to stick it to this man. But I'm a true believer that what goes around comes back around tenfold. If you wish to take part in a live interview on this channel discussing any of these topics, let us know by emailing us on sashahnnewsroom at gmail.com for scheduling. That is all we had for you today on HN What's Your Say. To keep updated whenever we post a new video, subscribe to this channel now. Also remember to hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And feel free to share your opinions with us in the comment section below, and let us know if you would like us to publish your views in our next release. We value all our subscribers' opinions.